So today is the first day of dinosaurs. We're going to be drawing a triceratops. Look, okay, I've stuck him under here. The one you may have seen in the email. And you can see that we're not drawing scientifically accurate Jurassic Park types. We're doing more of the whimsical kind that you'll see on the Sunday comics or something like that. So I'm going to grab a pencil and a piece of paper and we're going to warm up a little bit first before we dive in with some just review on mastering 3D forms. Even though we're working with a 2D medium, we give the illusion of 3D forms. So let's go ahead and warm up with some circles. I'll do just three right across the top of my paper. About the same size. So right now these are circles, flat, lacking dimension. But rather than lacking, they have the potential, the potential to be so much. So I'm going to add what would flatten what the not to do. We go over this in class a lot is that if I wanted to put a grid pattern on this ball, I could not do it with straight lines going one way and straight lines the other way because then we have a waffle and we no longer have a sphere. So we've got to learn to curve those lines around our sphere and the best of you, the ones who have practiced this a lot, will know to actually draw the entire oval. Because what happens is we get into this habit of, oh, I'm going to draw a curved line and then what we do is we go like this. That's a curved line, no doubt, but right here it gets really pointy. If I tried to make this an oval, I couldn't. It turns into this. So we really want to make sure that wraps around our sphere. Wraps around and around and the other way too wrapping around wrapping around With our dinosaurs, we'll be moving into a little bit more complex shapes. We'll be using a lot of cylinders, but cylinders that get skinny and fat and change their shape as they go down, their volumes as they go down. So we're going to start with trying some building blocks here, putting together some different types of cylinders. So for the front legs, what we're going to be doing later, you can see on this front leg here, we've got kind of the cylinder shape on the bottom. But then we've got a narrower section. It's going to widen out again, and then it's going to get narrow again. So we've got a couple of different pieces there, like four of them. Let's see if we can keep our shapes nice and rounded. So I'm going to start with what would be the bottom of the foot. Whoops, try to be on camera here. What would be the bottom of the foot? Keeping it nice and round. And I'll bring the edge of that cylinder up. Just a bit. I'll put another cylinder in there, to, or cylinder, another oval in there just to keep it nice and 3D lightly. Then it goes back to that little elbow section. So we're going to have this leaning section in here. Add another oval just to keep it. 3D and rounded. Then it'll get wide again as it comes to the shoulder. And narrow again as it goes to the shoulder blade. All of those ovals can get confusing, so I'm going to go back with my eraser and just take out the back edge of each one, the top edge, so I can keep my contour but not confuse myself with too many ovals. The other little review is the back leg coming toward us. So we have some foreshortening going on here, and we also have some 
widths that change. Even though the foot is quite rounded, by the time you get to the knee, this is becoming more of a rectangular volume. So we're going to practice just changing those volumes as we go. Bottom of the foot. And I'm going to go straight into my skinny rectangle. Real lightly there. That would be like the kneecap right up there. And then I'll connect up my shapes. Like so. And the upper part of the leg turns into kind of a wedge. The top of it looks a little bit like that. It's getting thinner at the top. And then connects to that thickness at the bottom. So we've got that simplified shape, but I find it a good little practice to add some contour lines all the way up the shape so that you can see where it starts flattening out, where this might be a little bit more rounded. It has to get flatter and flatter until we get up to this flattened rectangle shape. And if you like, you can throw on a few cross contours as well, following the top plane of that shape. So I'm going to get a little wider at the toe. Rather than just drawing stripes, you have to kind of think about where it's going to pinch in thin and where is it going to get thicker. We can get a little crazy, so don't worry, we're going to practice those probably almost every time. And then last one, the tail. So that's a case where we have a piece that's thick as it connects to the body and then gets narrower as it goes away. So I'm going to do my overall tail shape. But again, what we don't want to do is this, where we just have this rounded contour all the way down. This is like a dinosaur toy made out of plastic, not necessarily a real dinosaur. So we want to try to keep in mind where it's going to sort of sag down and we'll feel the weight of this flesh. Even though it's just a simple cartoon character, keeping in mind these weights will help to influence the overall shape of it. Excellent. Now that we've done the boring stuff, let's get to the good stuff. I'm going to try to set up my camera so we can see our little reference guy and my paper at the same time. I'll move the camera a little more this way. There we go. I'm going to start with the head and we're going to leave a little room on top so we can fit his big frill. I'll start with that wonderful circle that has all the potential in the world. Light and loose and sketchy. And then we've got his face looking almost straight at us, but with a tilt. So I'm going to tilt my nose line or my center line along there. 
and his head is also going to be tilted a little bit back. So I'm going to draw his eye line curve, and we're going to think of that oval, not just a curved line, but an oval within that sphere. And then overlapping this intersection, I'll put the little raindrop shape for his nose. And even though we're drawing a raindrop shape, we're still thinking of this as a cone. So it's rounded, has volume, and has this little rim of skin right around it. You can clean up any plot lines on the inside. Then we're going to add this big mouth section. So I'm going to come down from the nose and come out in a little, little cheek smile there on both sides. And then I'm adding this big jaw that narrows as it goes down. So I'm going to use some curved lines, getting narrower and narrower. And clean up the inside, don't need that anymore. Keep it looking more like a baby dinosaur. You want to keep this shape shorter. If you don't care about the age, it doesn't matter. You can get as big as you want. And then for the inside of the mouth, we have this little sort of beak in front right under the nose horn. Coming up. And not following the outside contour exactly. And a little bump in there before we end with a very narrow lower lip. And then we'll put a little tongue inside. You can make this like a heart or a little triangle. And when we get to the inking stage, we'll ink that all in black. So I'll just put a little X there to remind me. And we'll work a little bit more on the top of the head. Let me see if I can zoom in a little. There we go, make things easier. So I just put little dot eyes for my dinosaur, but if you want to do some eye whites or a different style of eye, that's up to you. It's your dinosaur. I'm going to stick in my little dot eyes again. This time I'm making them wrap around the head a little bit more than I did on this one. Tilting those ovals. And then we'll put some nice little brow ridge or brow ridges above each eye. So I've got some structure to the top of the head. And then I'll bring the top of the forehead here, the top of the cranium into a little bit of a point as well. And then we'll put on that nice big 
Triceratops bands. I'm going to go straight up from the nose with a guideline. You get the height of, whoops, let me get on camera, height of that frill. And then come down in the big shape. Plot that out first. And once you have your big shape plotted in, you'll probably want to plot in your horn so that you don't accidentally put a spike right near a horn. So I'm going to go right from that eyebrow ridge, lean those horns outward. I'm keeping mine fairly rounded just to keep the friendly cartoony dinosaur appearance. And if you want to try pointed horns, you can try that out. And then the spikes tend to have a little gap in between that could probably fit another spike if you put them all in, but really it's more like spike, blank, spike, blank, spike, blank. And we'll just do that all the way around starting from the central one at the top. And again, if you make those more rounded, your dinosaur will be more friendly. And if they're spiky, it'll be a little less friendly. I also tend to have my spikes get progressively smaller as they go around. Oops, that one's a little close. And then we can start plotting out the body. So the body has two major masses. You can probably envision kind of a circle in front there and another oval in back there and just connecting them in the middle. Or if you want to jump right to it, you can do sort of a bean shape for the entire body. So I'm just going to come right down from the head. I want to keep this roundness in the shoulder there. Don't lose that into a flat line. I'm also trying to keep the bottom part of the body fairly flat so we can have that just um, illusion of like flesh pressing against the ground, gravity taking effect. And then we'll start on those front legs. So we've got that attachment to the shoulder blade, very much like we did in Big Cat's class. I'm going to start with that first protruding section there. Come down into the joint right there. And then forward. And as we did in practice, I'm going to remember that the bottom of the foot is very much an oval. And then we've got another one that's mostly covered up, but we'll see the front edge sticking out there. So you can sculpt out the chest if you want first. You can get that shape nailed down and then stick in the other leg.
Remember to put this foot higher because of placement. Things higher on the paper equals farther away. Keep an eye out for any tangents, any lines flowing into another line that makes it difficult to understand what's going on, change it. Then we'll stick on that back leg and we want to remember our previous shape, how it starts out quite thin and it's going to get bigger and rounder as it comes forward. So back here in this area, it's going to be fairly flat and bony. And then as it comes forward, you can place that bottom of the foot. Once it gets to the knee, it's going to get more flat. And connect right up into that back. Overlapping is always your friend, so I put my back foot right in front of my front leg, but this has to be lower than the bottom of this front foot because lower would mean closer to us. If I have this one lower and this one higher, he's lifting up his back leg, and I don't want that. I want him to look like he's sitting planted right on the ground. So I have to make sure that my placement has a nice clear hierarchy of highest, medium high, lowest. Then for that other foot, it's going to be higher than that foot so that we know it's on the other side. This one I kind of put out a little far. I feel like this one looks like he has a super long leg in the back, so I'm going to overlap a little bit more on this drawing, learn from my mistakes, and just have the toe sticking out there. Then to add a tail, if you put a nice short stubby tail on there, it'll look more like a baby. If you want a little bit older dinosaur, you can put a longer, leaner tail. And our general shapes are in place. We just have to put on some details. So starting with the front legs here, I've got some lines showing some wrinkles by the knees. Also some wrinkles in the armpit there, so you can see the skin that's bunching up. And then the toes. There's probably four toes across, but I simplified it and did three, so that's up to you. You can do four, you can do three, whatever you think looks good. And then with Betsy, the I'm only seeing the reference. I'm not seeing what you're drawing. Whoops. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. You can also change your outer contour a little bit if you want to show some bumps on the knee or have it protrude a little bit and change that outer contour to show that.
And then also this shoulder mass, if you want to show the weight or a little bit of the flesh drooping down, you can overlap that line there. You have a little overlap there. No, it's going to mess up my armpit lines. Never mind. On the back knee. And then for these back legs, we'll have to show the bottom of the foot and then the little toenails on top. So a lot of foreshortening going on. I'm also going to change my perfectly perfect oval. Not that it's perfect, but I'm going to turn it into more of a foot shape. I'm going to trim some off of the edges here. Maybe flatten it out. And then put some highly foreshortened little toes on top. You can also put some wrinkles on the bottom or just some texture to show it's the bottom of the foot. As we get to that knee again, I'm going to add some wrinkles, wrinkly skin. And don't forget the other foot over here. I still have to shape that bottom of the foot. Curve it a little bit so it's not just a plastic oval. Put some little toenails on top. And then for the tail, I'm going to open up the connection here between the body and the tail and just leave a little bit of overlap on the bottom, a little wrinkle. And also on the top, another wrinkle, maybe at a different angle so that they're not mirror images of one another. And before we go to ink, just kind of take a breath, step back, look at your drawing, see if there's anything that bugs you. Right now the horns are bothering me. This one's kind of wide and this one's kind of skinny. So I think I'm going to try to fix that. I don't think I like the eyes as much as my first one, so I'm also going to change my eyes. Maybe put them a little more upright. Yeah, that's pretty good. So once you're satisfied with your drawing, we're going to take our kneading eraser and roll it between our hands so we can get a little bit of a rolling pin and just lighten up our drawing so we can get rid of the extra graphite and ink.
Betsy, I, I can't stay for the duration of the class. Oh, no problem. I think I'll, I'll, I'll leave here, but this is, here's my. Oh, here's let me pin your video so I can see yeah. your dinosaur. Oh, look at him, so cute. Nice job. I like how you took his tail over onto the other page. <laughs> yeah, and I, I did your, um, your last anatomy lesson, too. I, I don't have that. I ran out of paper on that sketchbook, so I don't have it on me. But. Oh, okay. Well, next time, I'll take a look. Yeah. yeah, but I'm glad that you have all the videos posted. Oh, yeah, we're going to do a better job of keeping up with all the classes this term. So, yeah, I'm glad they helped. Well, thanks, Betsy. Frank, good to see you. Yeah, see you next time. Thank you. Have a good 4th of July, guys. Oh, you too. Be safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well, there's nothing I can teach you, Frank, about inking, so I'll leave you to that. <laughs> but I will recite our little inking process that I do for most JLI students which is our holding lines, our thicker lines on the outside. Go around it like a cookie cutter. Can't find my brush pen though, it's in here somewhere.
for those of you watching this video later who don't have a brush pen, you can always fake a brush pen effect by taking your felt tip pen and just going over your line a second time and going a little bit wider and then just filling in the gap. And that'll give you some nice line variation. Oops, don't waste your time doing line variation there because we're going to fill it in all black anyway. Once you're done inking, we'll move on to color. As you can tell from my demo piece, we're not going with realistic colors. You can just pick pink, purple, blue, green, whatever color you like. You'll probably need two different versions of the color, a light color or a light version and a darker version of the same color. Let's see what I got. I think I'll do a green one this time. I've got kind of a darker green. Actually, maybe I'll use this one. Graphic green.
like to start with my lightest colors first. So I'm going to start with my yellow and then just color in the horns and probably the underside. Maybe erase my pencil lines a little more. And I'll take the lighter version of my scale color and go right over some of my lighter yellow. It'll blend a little bit as I go into this color. Printer paper isn't great for soaking up marker. I think next time I'll use some cardstock. I also think that brush pen is not waterproof, so it's smudging in my marker. Learn from my mistakes, people. Oops, missed his tummy. As I'm coloring, I like to follow the contour whenever I remember to do so. So we are talking about how the leg is rounder down there and then kind of flattens out at the hip. I'm going to use my strokes to convey that as well.
just about five minutes left, but to show you the next step, I grab my darker color for the scales, and then I start adding whatever camouflage pattern you want. You don't have to do spots. You could do stripes or some other pattern that you've seen in nature, but I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of variation to my dinosaur here and just take my darker marker and start coloring out a pattern. And since they're cartoony, you can get more graphic and iconic with it. If you want to put little hearts on there, little stars, go for it. Do what makes you happy. I'm going to stick with my kind of angular cow spot pattern. Maybe not cow spot, frog spots, I don't know. Even as I'm coloring my spots, I'm thinking of my contour. I'm going to wrap that around his back over the leg. Over the tail. Curve it.
Just two more minutes to finish up and we'll call it a day. Five o'clock. How'd it go, Frank? I don't have any uh, color markers, but I do have some color pencils. Excellent. Improvise with what you've got. Aw, look at that little guy. Super cute. Well, next week we'll do a stegosaurus and draw him a friend. Okay, I'm going to head over to the other class. Good seeing you. Thanks for hanging out with me. <laughs> See you next time.